The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Sixth chapter, text number two through five, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded in February of 1969 in Los Angeles. Verse number two. What is called renunciation is the same as yoga, or linking oneself with the Supreme. For no one can become a yogi unless he renounces the desire for sense gratification. Here is the point of yoga practice. <coughs> yoga means to join Now, in our conditional state, although we are part and parcel of the Supreme, but we are now uh, separated. The same example, this finger is part and parcel of your body, but if it is separated, amputated, it has no value. But so long it is joined with this body, its value is millions of dollars and more than that. If there is any disease, you can spend any amount to cure. Similarly, we at the present moment, in the cognizant state of material existence, we are separated from God. Therefore, we are so much reluctant to speak of God, to understand about God, our relationship to God. We think it is simply a waste of time. In this meeting, everyone knows that this temple, Krishna consciousness temple, is speaking of God or any charge. People are not very much interested. They think this is a kind of, uh, what is called, recreation in the name of a spiritual advancement. Otherwise, it is simply a waste of time. Better this time could be used for earning some money or enjoying a club or in a restaurant, sense enjoying. <coughs> so, detraction from God means sense enjoying. Those who are too much addicted to sense enjoyment, they are not. Uh, I mean to say, eligible for yoga system. Yoga system is not that, that you go on doing all nonsense in sense gratification and in simply sit down meditation. This is simply colossal work. <coughs> it has no meaning. Yoga system first is the sense, uh, controlling the sense, yam yam. There are eight different stages of practicing yoga. Ah, yam, niyam, asan, dhyan, dharana, pranayam, pratyaha, samadhi. So, in the beginning, first of all, we shall speak in this chapter, Lord Krishna will teach you what is yoga system. Therefore, in the beginning, Krishna says that, uh, for no one can become a yogi unless he renounces the desire for sense gratification. So, anyone who is indulging in sense gratification is a nonsense. He is not a yogi. He cannot be a yogi. Yoga uh, system is strictly celibacy. No sex life. 
That is no basis. No one can become a yogi if he indulges in sex life. Oh. The so-called yogis come to your country and say, yes, whatever your life can do. Ah. He meditates. I give you some mantra. These are all nonsense. Yes, it is an authoritative statement that <coughs> no one can become a yogi unless he renounces the desire for sense and reach. This is the first condition. Ah. Gone. <coughs> Verse number three. For one who is neophyte in the eightfold yogic system, work is said to be the means, and for one who has already attained in yoga, cessation of all material activities is said to be the means. Yes. There is two stages. <coughs> one who is practicing yoga to reach to the perfectional platform and one who has attained the perfectional platform. So, so long <coughs> one is not on the perfectional platform, just trying to do it. At that time there are so many works that uh, asan system, yam, yam. So generally in your uh, country there are so many yoga societies, they display this asana system, how to sit down uh, in different postures, that helps. But that is the process simply to get on to the real platform. They are simply means. Uh, real yoga system, perfection, is different from those uh, bodily gymnastic process. So there are two stages. One stage <coughs> is trying to reach the perfectional platform, and another stage is one who has reached the perfectional platform. Go on. Verse number four. A person who has attained yoga, when, having renounced all material desires, he neither acts for sense gratification nor engages in fruited activities. Yes. This is the perfection stage of yoga uh, system, <coughs> yoga practice. A person is said to have attained to yoga. That means, yoga means connection. Just like <coughs> uh, the same example. Suppose this finger was out of my body. <coughs> or don't take this finger, take any machine part. It is out of the machine, lying idle. And as soon as you join with the machine, it works, it's different function. Katakat, 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 it works. Ah. With yoga, it has been joined. Similarly, we are now differentiated. These material activities, uh, primitive activities, they have been described simply wasting time. Murha. Murha. They have been described in the Bhagavad Gita as Murha. Murha means rasca. Why? Uh, such a big businessman, you say, rascal, why? <coughs> He's earning uh, thousands of dollars daily. But they have been described, murha, rascal, because they are working so hard, but what he is enjoying? He is enjoying the same amount of eating, sleeping, and meeting. That's all. As a man who is earning millions of dollars daily, that does not mean he can enjoy making millions of women. No. That is not possible. His power of making is same, one who is earning ten dollars. 
His power of eating is the same with the man, one who is earning ten dollars. So he does not think that my enjoyment of life <coughs> is the same amount with the man who is earning ten dollars. Then why I am working so hard for earning millions of dollars daily? Why am I spoiling my energy in that way? You see? They are called Mudha. Namangusuda. Actually, <coughs> he should have engaged when he earns millions of dollars daily. He should have engaged himself, his time and energy, how to understand God, what is the purpose of life, ah, because he has no economic problem. So he has got enough time he can utilize in Krishna consciousness or God consciousness. But he <coughs> does not take part in that way. Therefore he is Mura. Mura means, actually Mura means ass. So his intelligence is not very nice. Hmm. A person is said to have attained yoga by having renounced all material desires. Oh. If one is in perfection of yoga, then he is satisfied. He has no more any material desire. Oh. That is perfection. He neither acts for sense gratification nor engages in fruitive activities. Uh, fruitive activities are also, fruitive activities means you want something for sense gratification. One is practically engaged in sense gratification and one is collecting money for sense gratification. So the fruitive activity is supposed pious activity. Pious activities, according to Veda, <coughs> uh, everywhere, if you are virtuous, if you give some money in charity, it is virtuous activities. If you give some money for opening hospital, if you give some money for opening schools, free education, these are cer certainly virtuous activities. But they are also <coughs> meant for sense gratification. Ah. Suppose if I give in charity for uh, distributing education, then in my next life I will be uh, getting good facilities for education, I will be highly educated, or uh, being educated I shall get nice post. But at the end, what is the idea? If I get a good post, if I get a good position, how do I utilize it? Paul says that. Nice. That's all. Because I do not know anything else. Ah. And that is free activities. If I go to heaven, a better standard of life. Suppose in your America, a better standard of life than India. But what does this mean, better standard of life? The same, eating, sleeping, in a better time, that's all. You are not doing anything more. They are also eating, they are eating some uh, coarse grain, you are, e you are eating very nice thing, but eating, not beyond this eating. So, my better standard of life does not mean any a spiritual realization. A better standard of eating, sleeping, making, that's all. Oh. So this is called fruitive activity. The fruitive activity is also another uh, pattern of sense gratification. Uh, but it is on the basis of sense gratification. And yoga means connection with the Supreme. When the Supreme is connected, as soon as, just like Dhru Maharaj, as soon as he saw God, Narayan, that boy was <coughs> undergoing severe austerities. 
<coughs> penances to see God. He saw. But when he saw, then he said, Shamin Kitar Pusmi Barangana Jayasi. My dear Lord, I am now fully satisfied. I don't want to ask anything, any benediction from you. That's what is benediction. Benediction means you get very nice a kingdom or a very nice wife or very nice food staff, very nice... These things we consider as benediction. But actually when one becomes connected with God, he does not want any such benediction. He is satisfied, fully satisfied. Shamin kitatos me, barang na jach. The history of this Dhruva Maharaj have told him many times that he was a child, five years boy, old. He was insulted by his stepmother. He was sitting on the lap of his father. He was trying. And his stepmother said, Oh, you cannot sit on the lap of your father because you are not born in my womb. So he was Kshatriya boy, although five years old, he took it a great insult. <coughs> so he went to his own mother. Mother, stepmother has insulted him like this. He was crying. His mother said, What can I do, my dear boy? Your father loves your stepmother more. What can I do? No, I, I want my father's uh, kingdom. Tell me how can I get it? Uh, then mother said, my dear, why Krishna, God blesses you, you can get. Where is God? She said, oh, we have heard God is in the forest. Great sages go there and find out. She went to the forest. And underwent severe penances, and he saw God. But when he saw God, Narayan, he is no more anxious for the kingdom of his father. Ah. No more anxious. He said, My dear Lord, I am satisfied, fully satisfied. I do not want any more my kingdom, the kingdom of my father. He gave the comparison that I uh, was searching out some pearls, but I have got valuable jewels. So, uh, that means he is more satisfied. When you actually connect yourself with God, then you feel yourself many millions times satisfied than enjoying this material world. That is God's reality. That is the perfection of yoga. Word. When a person is fully engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, he is pleased in himself, and thus he is no longer engaged in sense gratification or in creative activities. Otherwise, what must be engaged in sense gratification since one cannot live without engagement? Yeah, that is the part. We must have engagement. We cannot stop the same example. You cannot stop a child uh, working or in activities. By nature, we are living entities, we must act. It is not possible to stop activity. So, just like it is said, an idle brain is a devil's work. So, if you have no good engagement, then you will have to engage yourself in something nonsense. Uh, just like a child, if he is not engaged in education, he becomes a spoiled child. Similarly, our two business, either material sense gratification or Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga or yoga, so if I am not in yoga system, then I must be in sense gratification. And if I am sense gratification, there is no question of yoga. Oh, wow.
Krishna consciousness, one must be always seeking self-centered or extended selfish activities. But a Krishna conscious person can do everything for the satisfaction of Krishna and thereby be perfectly detached from sense gratification. One who has no such realization must mechanically try to escape material desires before being elevated to the top rung of the yoga ladder. Jova ladder. Jova ladder, it has been uh, compared with a ladder, just like steps. Uh, in a big uh, skyscraper house there are steps. So every step is a progress, that's a fact. So the whole step ladder may be called the yoga system. But one may be on the fifth step, another may be on the fiftieth step, another may be on the five hundred step, and another may be on the top of the house. So although the whole ladder is called yoga system or staircase, but one who is on the fifth step, he cannot be equal with the person who is on the fiftieth step. Or one who is on the fiftieth step, he cannot be compared with the man who is on the five hundred step. Similarly, in the Bhagavad Gita, he find karma yoga, jnana yoga, dhyana yoga, bhakti yoga. It is stated with the name yoga. Because the whole ladder is connected with the topmost floor. So every system is connected with God, Krishna. But that does not mean every man is on the topmost floor. One who is on the topmost floor, he is to be understood in Krishna consciousness. Others, they are just like fifth or fiftieth or five hundred lives. The whole thing is called ladder. Go on. Verse number five. A man must elevate himself by his own mind, not be crazy himself. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well. Report. The Sanskrit word Hashim, soul. He knows body, mind, and soul, depending upon different circumstances. In the yoga system, the mind and the conditioned soul are especially important. Since the mind is the central point of yoga practice, Atma here refers to the mind. The purpose of the yoga system is to control the mind and to draw it away from attachment to sense objects. It is stressed herewith that the mind must be so trained that it can deliver the conditioned soul from the Maya of nature. In the Ashtanga yoga system, this uh, eight or uh, whole yoga system, Dan Dharana, uh, <coughs> they are meant for controlling the mind. Uh, don't make sound. Uh, mind, unless you control the mind, in the beginning it is said, a man must elevate himself by his own mind. Uh, mind is a uh, driver. The body is the chariot or car. So that's why like if you call your, ask your driver, please get me into Krishna consciousness temple, the driver will bring you here. And if you ask your driver, please uh, get me in that liquor house. Uh, the driver will drive you there. The driver's business is to drive you wherever you like. Similarly, your mind is the driver. If you can control, but if the driver takes your license, that wherever he likes, he will take it. Then you are gone. Then your driver is your enemy. But if your driver acts on your order, then he is your friend. So actually, the yoga system means 
the control the mind in such a way that he will act as your friend, not as your enemy. Oh. Actually, the mind is acting as my because I have got little independence, because I am part and parcel of the Supreme who has got full independence, therefore I have got little independence. The mind is controlling that independence. If mind says, all right, let me go to the Krishna conscious temple, and the mind can say, ah, oh, what is that nonsense? Krishna, let us go to some club. So mind is driving him. So therefore, uh, the, our Krishna consciousness movement is to fix up the mind in Krishna. That's all. He cannot but act as friend. You see, he has no scope to give any, anyone place. Uh, as soon as Krishna is seated on the mind, just like as soon as there is sunshine, the sun is on the sky, there is no scope of darkness. There is no possibility. Darkness will never come before the sun. Similarly, Krishna is just like sun. You keep Krishna on the mind. The maya darkness will never be able to come. That is the first class yoga system. That is the perfection of yoga system. One whose mind is so strong that mind will not allow any nonsense to come in. Then where is your fall down? Huh? The mind is strong. The driver is strong. Uh, he cannot take you anywhere. Unless it is that. So, the whole yoga system means to make the mind strong, not to deviate from the Supreme. That is perfection of yoga system. Krishna One should fix up, just like Ammuris Maharaj fixed up his mind, uh, only on Krishna. And there was a fight between a great yogi, Ashtanga yogi, Dudvasa Muni. Ah. The Maharaj Amuris, he was a king, he was a householder, ah. and he was a counseling man. The householder means he has to take account of counseling pens, eh, dollars, cents. King, he was actually king. So Dudvasa Muni was a great yogi. He was envious of this king. That, how is that? I am so great a yogi, I can travel in this space, and this man is ordinary king. He ca cannot show such jugglery uh, or yoga system, but still people honor him most. Why? I shall teach him some lesson. So he picked up some quarrel with the king, that's a long story. I shall state it some other day. So after all he was defeated. And he was directed by Narayan to take shelter at the feet of the king Maharaj Amuls. Oh. These uh, instances we see from authoritative scripture that he was simply keeping Krishna in his mind. And he defeated the greatest yogi. Dudvasa Mani, he was so perfect yogi that within one year he traveled all over this material space and beyond the material space in the spiritual space that went directly to the kingdom of abode of God Vaikuntha and saw the personality of Godhead personally. Still he was so weak that he has to come back and fall down on the feet of Maharaj But Maharaj Amuri, he was ordinary king, he was simply thinking of Krishna, that's all. Uh, these instances we will see. Therefore, 
the highest perfection of yoga system is to control the mind. And you can control the mind very easily if you keep the lotus two feet of Krishna within you. Yes. Simply think of Krishna and you are come. You are victorious. You become the top muscle. Because after all, the yoga system is yoga indriya samyama. Yoga means to control the senses. And above the sense, the mind. So if you control the mind, the senses are controlled automatically. Ah. Your tongue wants to eat something, nonsense, but if your mind is strong, mind says, no, you cannot eat. You cannot eat anything except Krishna Prasad. Then tongue is controlled. So senses are controlled by the mind. Indriyani pararahu, indriya bha paramanaha. Yeah, or my body means senses. So the senses, my activities mean sensual activities, that's all. But above the senses are, is the mind. Above the mind is the intelligence. And above the intelligence is the spirit soul. Then if one is on the spiritual platform, on the soul platform, then his intelligence is spiritualized, his mind is spiritualized, his senses are spiritualized, he is spiritualized. This is the process of Krishna consciousness. Because actually the spirit soul is working, but he has given his power of attorney to this nonsense mind. He is sleeping. But when he is awakened, the master is awakened, uh, the servant cannot do anything nonsense. Similarly, if you are awakened in Krishna consciousness, your intelligence, your mind, or your senses cannot act nonsensically. The master according to that. That is spiritualization. Oh. That is called purification. Rishikena, Rishikesa, Sevanam, Bhakti Richa. Bhakti means to act spiritually. How you can act? You have to act with your senses. Therefore you have to spiritualize your senses. Meditation, stopping action means stopping nonsense. But acting in Krishna consciousness is transcendental. That's why you have to stop your senses acting nonsense. But that is not perfection. You have to act nicely. That is the perfection. Otherwise, if you don't train your senses to act nicely, it will again fall down to the nonsense acting. So you have to give engagement to the senses to act for Krishna. Ah, then there is no chance of fall down. That is Krishna consciousness. Go on. In material existence, one is subjected to the influence of the mind and the senses. In fact, the pure soul is entangled in the material world because of the mind and the ego, which desires to lord it over material nature. Therefore, the mind should be trained so that it will not be attracted by the glitter of material nature. In this way, the conditioned soul may be saved. One should not degrade oneself by attraction to sense objects. The more one is attracted by sense objects, the more one becomes entangled in material existence. The best way to disentangle oneself is always to engage the mind in Krishna's service. The Sanskrit word, hi, in this verse is used for emphasizing this point, i.e., that one must do this. It is also said, for man, mind is the cause of bondage, and mind is the cause of liberation. Mind absorbed in sense object is the cause of bondage, and mind detached from the sense object is the cause of liberation. Therefore, the mind, which is always engaged in Krishna consciousness, is the cause of supreme liberation. Yeah. There is no chance. Mind being engaged all in Krishna consciousness. There is no chance 
are we being engaged in Maya consciousness? The more we engage our mind in Krishna consciousness, the more you keep yourself in the sunlight, there is no chance of uh, getting into darkness. Uh, that is the process. If you like, you are at liberty. You can keep yourself within the room in darkness and you can come in the broad daylight. That depends on your choice. But when you come in the broad sunlight, uh, there is no chance of that. Oh. Darkness can be eradicated by light, but light cannot be covered by darkness. Uh. Suppose you are in a dark room, you bring my lamp, the darkness is over. But you take something dark and go to the sunlight, so it will fade out. So Krishna Shuddha Sama Maya Andhaka. Krishna is just like sunlight. And Maya is just like darkness. So what darkness you will do in sunlight? You keep yourself in sunlight. Darkness will fade, act upon you. This is the whole philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Keep all of yourself engaged in Krishna consciousness activities. Maya will not be able to touch you. Because there is no possibility of darkness become influential in life. That is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam that when Vyasdev, under the instruction of his spiritual master Narad, ah, yes, by Bhakti Yoga, Bhakti Yogi Pranihite Samma Pranihite Amale, Bhakti Yogi na Manasi. Uh, he say mind, Manasi means mind. When enlightened by Bhakti Yoga, Bhakti life, uh, Bhakti Yogi na Manasi Samma Pranihite Amale, when the mind becomes completely freed from all contamination, that can be done by Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga na Manasi Sammak Pranihite Male Apasat Purusang Purnam He saw the Supreme Personality of God. Maya Jagada Pasram and he saw this Maya just on the background. Apasram. Light and darkness along with just like here is light. There is darkness also here, yeah. little darkness. The darkness remains under the shelter of light, but light does not remain under the shelter of darkness. So, as they saw Krishna, the Supreme Lord, and this Maya darkness of Ashram, just under his, under his shelter, uh, and who is this Maya? That is explained. Jaya Sanmahito Jiva. The same Maya, the same initial energy which has covered these conditioned souls. And who are those conditioned? Jaya Sanmahito Jiva. Atmanam Trigunatmakam. Although the spirit soul is as light as Krishna or God, all this more. But he is identifying himself with this material world. Jaya Sarme. This is called illusion. When we identify ourselves with this matter. Jaya Sarmahita Jiva Atmanam Trigunatma Paropi Manute Anartha. Although he is transcendental, he still is engaged in nonsensical activities. Paropi Manute Anartha Tatkritancha Vipaddate, and he acts dictated by this Maya. Yeah. These are very nicely explained in Samadha Bhagavatam. In the first canto, you will say, fine, same chapter. So, our position is that, that we are 
spiritual spark, lightning fast, spark. But now you are covered by this illusory energy, Maya. And you are being dictated by the Maya and acting and becoming entangled more and more in material energy. And you have to get out from this entanglement by this yoga or perfect yoga of Krishna consciousness. That is yoga system. All right.